Hey guys, and welcome back to the Pulse with Willie and Al. How's it going today, bud? Uh, pretty good, Willie. How are you, man? I'm doing well, man. Another day in Istanbul. Sun's out today. I feel like with the weather, it almost feels like it's going to be a sunny day. <laughs> yeah, we have blue skies here. It's been really nice the last couple of days. Uh, really, you know, highs in the 60s and 70s. Springs here, man, and I, I'm hyped for it. Yeah, well, listen, we are back today uh, with episode 42. Uh, and this is, it's crazy, 42 episodes, I think, back to last year. Uh, yeah. Yeah, a couple months from now, we dropped our first one, so it's kind of funny that, like, we're coming in on a year. Um, but uh, before we get started today, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, make sure you like the video, uh, and we'll, we'll hop into things here. Now, I know, uh, I know big things to talk about in terms of Major League Baseball, right? We are... Yeah. Almost what forty five games in now? Uh, we're about to at the thirty five game mark of the season. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we're gonna start with what I didn't think would happen is that we, uh, the Red Sox, are three games above five hundred. Yeah, I was. Into May. Yeah, looking at those standings, it's kind of crazy to see that you've got Baltimore and New York kind of neck and neck, and right behind them is Boston. In what is a typical Red Sox season, um, our ERA is like one of the our team ERA is like one of the best in the league, but we can't score runs to save our lives. Mm -hmm. So it is a thing of beauty. Uh, really, I, I think the, the surprise for me, I, I, this, I, this won't be a long winded Red Sox rant, I promise, but Cutter <laughs> Crawford, man, has been, dude has just been lighting it up. Like, good ERA, like, he's going deep into games, he's going six, seven innings per start, like, yeah, man, it's it's a weird hodgepodge of a team this year, but uh, they seem to, they're kind of outkicking their coverage, like, they're, they're playing better than, I think, talent-wise than what they have, and it's just been fun to watch. Well, I mean, I, so. I, I've outkicked my coverage on most of life, so it's very difficult for me to, to, dob someone else for that right i'm not going to be dobby fucking same, my guy yeah <laughs> big fucking same i'm not going to be dobby about that on somebody else but uh w one thing i i know you definitely want to talk about is uh <laughs> the dodgers right um Whew. yeah Boy. so they sweep the braves woof um and uh, you know close game in game one, but then yeah. after that, just real, real rough uh, for the next two. They just get beat up in game two and then just outlasted in game three. Um, but what, what do you think on that? Uh, clearly, Otani loves hitting home runs against the Braves. Uh, that that much was evident in that series. Boy, he... I don't know why you guys kept pitching to him. Like, just... Like, sure, Mookie Betts is hitting, like, 350. Sure, but, like, I don't know, man. Take... But, uh, yeah, I think if you're Atlanta, I think the one thing that I think you should probably take some solace in is that I think this is the series where Acuna got going. Because, like, up to this point, he kind of was really a non-factor. And the Braves were still putting up, like, a re were still really good offensively. And most of that is Azuna. Let's be honest. He's been on a tear to start the season. Uh, so I think this is the series where Acuna gets going. I mean... Not not only him, but also Austin Riley, Matt Olson. Like they've just been struggling. They've been in a huge slump recently, and it, it's tough to compare season over season, right? Because there's slight rule yeah. changes, things just people play differently, all of that. But like these guys were smashing home runs, what every 14 at bats last year. Now it's like every 50 at bats, um, which yeah. is just that, that's kind of rough, kind of scary and stuff. So the sweep did not feel good. Uh, but o you're right. Otani's killing it. You would think at one point they'd be like, hey, we're not going to do this anymore. Um, dude's been rocking it, right? Like 52 hits on the year, at least uh, from two days ago, right? 52 hits on the year yeah. was just absolutely murdering it. Um, w one thing I was going to ask you about, because I think it's kind of important, too, is it looks like, and we had talked about Yamamoto at the beginning. 
uh it seems like he settled down a little bit how how you feeling about him yeah i i like i said i think we said this in a previous episode i watched that guy pitch a bunch this past uh last year in the world baseball classic and that dude was lighting up everyone so like when he finally came over like i was like okay i think there's gonna be a transition he's gonna have some pressure playing in la on that huge contract and he he started the year kind of getting rocked and I think he's figured it out. He's he's young. He's a really good pitcher. And like you you kind of are starting to see the fruits of that where like when Yamamoto is on, man, there's there's no hitting him. Because mm-hmm. he has so many pitches and it just you're just essentially playing whack-a-mole. Where like you're like, okay, I think I'm sitting on this fastball, and then he hits you with this nasty curve that you're like, Well, fuck me, because I don't know what to do now. So <laughs> Yeah, well, I I mean, if if one thing, and it's been pretty awesome watching the highlights of him, uh, but Glasnow has just been carrying this staff, like doing sure all, all the heavy lifting. Yeah, no, Glasnow is. I think he's. I think he's the. He was the first of six wins on the year already, and like we're barely into May, mm-hmm. so that that tells you something right there. Um, he, oh boy, he is. He's honestly been kind of the the calling presence that the Dodgers have needed because, like, they, as a team, haven't pitched well. I know, I know they have the talent, but like they they kind of have been relying on their bullpen for a lot of things, and their bullpen just took a, a huge hit with Joe Kelly going on the IL again. And but Glassnow has been the one kind of solid force that's like. They're the reason they're, you know, they they have the best record in the National League right now. Yeah. It's him. Like, it's him, it's Otani, and it's Mookie Betts. Yeah, they uh, they definitely have a lot at the beginning of that lineup. Uh, the later parts is going to need some help, but uh, they're definitely a very tough team. I think they're five and a half games ahead in the, in the division right now, which is crazy to have a lead like that already, but... Um, you know, clearly the class of, of Major League Baseball right now. Uh, w- one thing I wanted yeah. to ask you about just before we move on from the Braves is uh, the Phillies because uh, it seems like the Phillies are playing better baseball than they've played probably within the last decade. And it seems like they didn't miss a beat from the postseason last year. They were just like, oh, this is the way we're always supposed to play. Uh, what are you feeling about them? Yeah, uh, Philly right now, they're, Bryce Harper is hitting, hitting the, the snot out of everything. They got Alec Bohm and Trey Turner who are both hitting around 340. It and then they got Zach Wheeler and Ranger Suarez, both with ERAs under two right now. Like they're kind of firing on all cylinders. Mm-hmm. They really are. Like, I don't necessarily still trust their bullpen, but like honestly, I don't know if that's gonna matter right now if you're if they're winning games seven one every night. Like right. where Harper's hitting Harper's hitting a moonshot every other day, and you can't keep Trey Turner off base. Like, yeah, they're they're doing everything that they you could have imagined from them, and it's it's weird because they usually suck this time of year. Mm-hmm. So it's confusing to me that they're actually really good, <laughs> and that Atlanta's kind of struggling right now. So like, I yeah, it it's it's a weird start to the season, and it, you know it's a weird start to the season. When hey, Oscar Hernandez for the Dodgers is is in the top three in home runs right now. He has yeah. nine home runs. Yeah, that's... Hey, Oscar Hernandez has nine home runs. Yeah, that's what kind of weirdness we're dealing with this season. So anything's <laughs> possible. It really is. Yeah. Well, speaking of some weirdness that are at least that caught me off a little bit, uh, Araya is going to, or Araya is right, going to the Padres. Like what? Yeah. Especially with like, they're, they're a ways back in that division right now. Is this a move that's really going to help them? Like, what do you see happening with this? Um, Unless Araya can start pitching. I don't understand how this like really helps them. Yeah. Respectfully. Like they, they have all the hitting in the world and that was their problem last year. Mm-hmm. They had a lineup that was just just as good as the Dodgers, but they couldn't pitch. That's more of the same this year. Mm-hmm. Like that's cool that they got him, um, but unless they figure out how to start pitching, like they're gonna just, they're gonna finish twenty games back of the Dodgers again and probably miss the playoffs. Yeah, like that's not good enough to make the playoffs for sure. And they and the Padres have 
they're kind of locked into this roster with all the money they've spent. Mm-hmm. And like, I I know they changed managers and I, you know, they tried trimming a little bit of the fat with getting rid of Soto, but like, I don't know, man. Like that just wasn't, yeah. I, I didn't think it was necessary to get rid of Soto. Like, but yeah, here we are. Like again, the Padres can score seven runs a game, but like, Routinely, they're letting up eight because they can't pitch and they don't really have a bullpen. So yeah, that's a tough thing. Um, which which kind of b- brings me around to the question, like some of the changes that have been made in baseball this year, right? Like, do you see offenses being down this year, or like something wrong with with hitting? I think this is this has kind of been a thing for a long time now, um, where if you just kind of look at it from like twenty years ago, like strikeouts are just on the rise they it just like i don't know very many good players that are have under 100 strikeouts in a season anymore like guys are routinely striking out like 160 170 times a season and that's to me that's unheard of so i i, I think it's more of a, an approach like it's an approach with like teams in the minors like they're telling guys like hey home run or bust and like that's great when like you have guys like Kyle Schwarber hitting 50 home runs, but hitting a buck 92. Like that's, you know what I mean? That's, that's the perfect example of that. Yeah. Like, and it's, in a, in a, it's kind of the same with pitching as well. And that's why you're seeing a lot of guys like getting hurt pitching because everybody wants everybody to throw a hundred, which is great, but like, that's just not sustainable. Right. So yeah, I, I think this has kind of been a it's, it's kind of been an issue for baseball for a while with hitting, and it's I don't see it getting any better. Like, I unfortunately, like, yeah. um, do you think the rule changes this year suggest that hitting would be better? I mean, it, it kind of seemed that way, right? That the rules were kind of looking to favor them, but it doesn't seem like that's the exact result uh, that we were getting out of this. Yeah, I, I kind of thought that offenses were going to be up across the board this year. And, like, if you like if you look, I think Atlanta is third in the National League in team batting average, and they're hitting, like, 250. Yeah. <laughs> which is just wild. Like, uh, if you – actually, I'm going to pull this up real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, Atlanta is, is fourth in team hitting this year, and they're hitting 258. Yeah. Which by this time last year they were on fire already. Like it's <laughs> yeah, like the Dodgers lead the league in hitting it at two seventy three, which is just pretty. It's like pretty average. Like, but like if you like if you look at a box score every night, there's at least I would say ten to thirteen strikeouts each night from each team. Yeah, which is bananas. Yeah, that's that's too much. Um, yeah. Well, maybe the reason why is maybe they're getting a little bit of help the pitchers um and i think it has to be talked about right like and this isn't a bash episode or anything like that but angel hernandez um did you see the video with wyatt langford yeah Yeah. i I mean it was just i wanted to get your thoughts on it because that's a very difficult script for umpires across the league to flip and it's not just one bad apple like this is happening a few times uh, that it's been brought up. So, like, how do they change that systematically to make sure um, it doesn't happen again? Well, I, I think first of all, Angel Hernandez being a bad umpire is 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 not news to a lot of people. I, I think that like more people are watching the game now, and honestly, like social media is more of a thing, so you can like get access to these things. And like like ten years ago, I was ranting and raving that Angel Hernandez is a bad umpire. And now, like, everybody else is kind of on that train, finally. Um, I, I think with, like, it, and I was just telling a friend this yesterday, like, a lot of times, like, if I open TikTok, the first thing that I see is, like, a bad Angel Hernandez call, which, kudos to TikTok to, for knowing the things that I do like, which are <laughs> which are pretty much just baseball and other weird things. Uh, but, yeah, like, he's just, it's it's just now becoming more commonly known that he's a bad umpire. And, mm-hmm. like, it's not going to get any better because um, umpires are part of a union, so there's a process to like get rid of an umpire, and like that's that's just not going to happen. It, it's not like yeah. I I just think it makes it tougher on the rest of them. Like you remember Chris Conroy, right? Yeah. I mean, I should call him Mister Conroy, uh, but uh, for those that don't know, Chris Conroy, who's uh, one of 
a very successful umpire in Major League Baseball now. He was actually a substitute teacher at, and I, I think phys ed teacher as well for a while at mm-hmm. our high school. Um, and, you know, him and my father were good friends, but like just a pretty awesome to see him get into baseball and like kind of followed him on his trek through umpiring and made it to the dance and really has figured out a way to be able to stay there and be accurate. So I think it makes it very yeah. difficult um, on guys like that, that really treat it as like a, um, a, a passion, right? Like it's, it's a profession and doing that and take it very seriously. Um, I think it puts a lot of pressure on guys like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. And it, I think my, my hope is that, you know, Angel Hernandez just doesn't ump the playoffs. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if only you had the power to kind of determine that, right? Yeah, because you, I, I, I know for you, like, look, Boston's not making the playoffs, so this is really kind of this is more towards you. But like, you don't want you don't want Angel Hernandez behind the plate of a game seven in the NLCS. I do if the Braves Atlanta... are pitching. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I mean, hey, well, listen, anything, anything, even close is going to be called, but it's just well, some... knowing Atlanta. Knowing Atlanta's luck, it's the one time he'll be consistent. Yeah. And you won't get any calls. Or they just give up the home run. Um, yeah. And it's their chance to have a Soler shot on them. Uh, Soler shot? <laughs> yeah. Like, Atlanta's bullpen is still not great, man. Yeah. I don't know how you sit through that on a daily basis because it's not great, man. It's I mean, it was, we talked about it last episode where, uh, you know, Freed had the the no hitter going in into the seventh and they decided like, ah, you know what? It feels too good to get this done for him. Let's give it up in the bottom of the ninth. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Iglesias did Iglesias things. And like, I, you know, it felt, felt nice. Felt like a sense of normalcy in my life. Oh my goodness. (laughs) All right. Well, let's, uh, change gears real quick. We've got some NFL news, uh, going on some free agent signings that happened, right? I guess the biggest marquee one was probably OBJ signing with the dolphins on the one year deal. And, uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, they already got Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, they bring in Janu Smith. So tons of weapons there. Um, you know, Braxton Berrios is there too. Uh, what, what do you think for, for him showing up there? Um, I think I'm at the point with OBJ where like him signing with a team isn't really news to me because I don't think he's really going to contribute in a meaningful way. Mm-hmm. I mean, I th- I, if you, you think about it with Baltimore last year, like that was a flower team. Yeah. He great locker room guy, supposedly last year. That's what Harbaugh was saying. Um, and I don't think he's going to, um, go out and bash him or anything like that. But in terms of production, like it was very pedestrian, I guess you could say mm-hmm. in terms of what he was able to do. Um, we'll see, you know, what happens. It's another guy that's a playmaker out there, but I mean, and I've said this before, like he hasn't really done a ton of relevant stuff for the last five, six years. And he's always hurt. Yeah. I mean, the last big game that I can remember him having was the Super Bowl, and he ended up getting hurt in that, which was sad to see him go down in a, in a game where he's playing so well, but yeah. Before that, I can't remember, man. He was just lost. Uh, he barked his way out of New York, got to Cleveland, and then just really didn't do anything there. Like, it was just yeah. non-existent. So, um, and it's kind of funny. Ever since that time, you look at, like, Baker Mayfield's trek and his. Yeah, Baker hasn't gotten a ring. I get that. But I think Baker's been more successful with that. You know, he he signs the deal with, with Tampa Bay. Uh, he's making the money, so yeah, um, yeah. But... I, like I said, I think it's 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 good for Miami. They're going to need the depth uh, at receiver because like Tyreek Hill weirdly gets kind of niched more than you think that he does. Yeah, and Jalen Waddles the same way. So they're going to eventually they'll both miss games at some point. So yeah, we'll see some time. And, yeah. Um... Yeah. Another signing that we saw, and I know this happened like literally right after the draft where I was pulling my hair out because Dallas didn't draft a running back. They ink Zeke the next day. And I'm just like, uh... um, excuse me. That is uh, New England's uh, leading receiver last year. Ezekiel Elliott. Thank you very much. OK. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which was never something that he was strong at. Right? No. Like, no. 
was, <laughs> it's not like he was ever good at being able to catch the ball, but um, he goes back to Dallas where he, I think immediately, like he's the starter there over Rico Dowdle. Um, I, I just, I, I don't know, man. It didn't really make sense to me at all, but okay. So he comes back and it's almost like, all right, well, let's forget what happened the last two years when you pretended you didn't want me. Um, yeah. But, I mean, what what are your thoughts on it? Anything relevant to you or you just really don't care about it? Um, It doesn't help Dallas in a real way. Nothing Dallas has done in the draft or free agency, which I'm pretty sure they just forgot the free agency was happening because they didn't really sign anybody. Um, I... I, I don't understand that I don't see a world where Dallas is somehow better. Like they're yeah. just gonna they're gonna get worse. Like in every like everybody else kind of in that division. Well, I don't think the Giants got better. Uh, but Philly got better and I think Washington got better. They got a quarterback. I think so. Was- uh, yeah, Washington definitely got better. They brought some some good guys in. Um you know, they, they added guys to their defense. They added through the draft. They've got new ownership there. So it really, like a, a GM and a head coach that really understand how to be able to win. Uh, the Giants, you know, they add Malik Neighbors, which was really good for them. Philly definitely yeah. got, they reloaded, man. And it makes you, like, kind of scratch your head. Like, how is that possible? Like, I used to feel like that with the Patriots sometimes. Like, how do they get so lucky with being able to get all of these guys, all of these tools? But, like, Philly, it, what they did during the draft should be scrutinized by 31 other teams. Like, they ended up getting yeah. two starting corners in the draft. That shouldn't happen. Like, one of those guys was in, fell into the second round to, like, the 20th pick in the second round, and he's he's got a chance to become a pro bowler. And, and I think it goes to show with Howie Roseman, too. Like, that guy's always wheeling and dealing. Yeah. Like, he, like, I thought, I think I was reading, like, he made something like, 20 something trades in the draft and like that's just insane like that guy is always moving always thinking like yeah. always like, because the eagles like at some point you would think are going to do that like the rebuild but he always keeps them relevant right like they always their first round pick is always in like the 20s like the 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 low 20s like yeah man like that you can't and it, that's doing that's just really good scouting. Yeah, that's really good scouting and like thinking ahead. So yeah, they've built a, a really good solid organization there um, with with a lot yeah. of depth. So uh, an, another signing that I saw, uh, Andrus Pete going to uh, signed with the Raiders, which I think is great because it gives them a guy that has experience at tackle, guard, um, some good depth for them as they kind of don't know what's going on with the right side of their offensive line. Uh, you know, they have returning starters at left tackle, left guard, and center, but right guard and tackle, are they're just kind of open. They draft uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, so he'll have a shot to be able to step in and, and maybe be a starter there where maybe you put Pete out at right tackle, but um, definitely a good thing for a team that needs to be able to protect the quarterback, uh, the mustache, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, I to be honest with you, I saw that signing, and I thought that was, in my brain, I was like, oh, that's a good depth signing for mm-hmm. them. Like they need that help. Uh, I, I, that's I, nothing but a positive for for the Raiders. Yeah. Like I, I don't know who's gonna play quarterback for them, uh, but like, at least that person will be kind of well protected. So like. Yeah, which they need it. Um, and just looking at it, right? There's still many solid free agents available. You look Xavier Howard, Justin Simmons, especially Justin Simmons, right? Like, uh, yeah. Stefan Gilmore, Dalton Risner, Calais Campbell, like they. There's guys that not only can reinforce a line and provide good depth that have experience playing on the line, but also guys that can get after the pass rusher. Justin Simmons, I cannot believe a guy goes from being a pro bowler to not signing. Now, he's going to sign somewhere. It just is, you know, where is it going to be? Um, yeah. So some interesting stuff that came up in terms of news that I wanted to mention to you uh, about Kirk Cousins. So re- reportedly did you see this right like reportedly he decided not to go back to minnesota because they told him that they were going to draft a quarterback with like one of their early picks but then he signs this mega deal with atlanta and what does atlanta turn around and do they (laughs) draft a quarterback with their 
earliest pick, right? Like it's Yep. I don't know. Is this news to you or is it just kind of BS? Um, I think it's funny. I th- I think it's the, the irony is not lost on me and I think it's honestly kind of hilarious. Mm-hmm. So uh, <laughs> um uh with Kirk Cousins, like I it always confused me on why he didn't stay before. Because like that was a pretty good situation that like he had like good receivers, like they had a solid defense. Like I, I know they kind of regressed last year, but like they didn't win a lot of one score games, but like that team was still really good. And yeah, and like Atlanta's kind of on the rise, maybe, but like defensively they don't have anything. Yeah, they're not um I don't think they have all the tools to be able to be uber successful there, but I don't know. That remains to be seen, right? Like you put up points and a, a, on offense, a defense can get better, right? Like, yeah. um, we will have to see, but some exciting news this week, right? Uh, Thursday, the NFL schedule set to debut. Uh, can't wait. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you, what matchup are you most looking forward to? Um, I know that I want to say, and I read this recently, that the Eagles are opening their season in Brazil this yep. year, and that'll be fun to watch. Like, I I am all for the NFL, like, trying to expand and, like, go global, and it's always fun when they uh, go to different markets. Like, they, they've gone to Mexico City a few times. They go to England every year. They've been going to Germany. Yep. Like, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here for all of it. Yeah, like, I don't think they're coming to Turkey, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's not rule it out yet. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Anything's possible. Yeah, I'm, dude. I'm really. Uh, so one of the things that just thinking about, because like I think about the divisions and who finished where within the division, the Bengals finished last in their division. They're gonna play the last place teams in the AFC. I think yeah. that's gonna be. That means they're playing the New Englands, the Denver Broncos, right? Uh, yeah. Actually, is it Denver or is it going to? No, it's actually going to be the Chargers, right? Because the Chargers had the higher pick, right? So, like, I don't know. You just look at that and I feel like I am I really want to see the matchup. I want them to make it happen between Cincinnati and Kansas City. I want to see that again. Um, yeah, and I, every because every time they play, that's a good game. Yep. Like, And I don't want to wait till the playoffs to see it, but... Yeah. Um, and I want to see Buffalo play Kansas City and I want to see Buffalo play Cincinnati and I want to see Baltimore then throw their hat in the ring and beat Kansas City or something. Right. Like that's <laughs> it yeah. kind of when I... when that happens, you're kind of like, all right. So if Baltimore beat this team, but, like we did it last year. Right. We weren't sure how good Baltimore was. And then all of a sudden they steamrolled Detroit and then they steamrolled Seattle the next week. And you're like, oh, they're a team. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. They were a team last year for me for a while. They were the, I don't trust them to win big games. And then they won big games. I was like, well, yeah, here we are. I got to. So yeah. All right. Uh, anything else you wanted to cover today at all? Uh, no, no, that's, uh, that's really it. Yeah. I know yeah. we've got the trivia question from last week, which was pretty good. Um, you know, uh, we had talked about uh, the Bears selecting number one overall, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and when was the last time Chicago drafted number one overall? I know you remember this. Uh, what year yeah. was it? <laughs> uh, so, technically, they had the number one pick last year, but they, they traded it away, so they didn't actually get to draft anybody at number one. Mm-hmm. The last time they actually drafted somebody at number one uh, was 1941. The guy's name was Tom Harmon. He was the reigning Heisman Trophy winner from Michigan, and he was uh, a running back. Wow. Who did not play long in the league (laughs) um, because, uh, unfortunately, World War II happened. And he, uh, the dude went to World War II and was a fighter pilot and survived a crash in South America uh, from his bomber plane. Like, a crash in South America on its way to Africa. Dude survived the plane crash. So, badass in my book. Man, that is yeah, that's wild. Um, his, his actually claim to fame is he was the first play by play announcer for the first televised Rose Bowl. Wow, yep, it's his claim to fame. Well, that's pretty awesome. Not being the number one pick or winning the Heisman, right? No, I mean, yeah. like, I think those are both cool things, but like, 
I think that's a really neat like distinction. That Absolutely, makes... right? Like yeah. that's super cool to be able to do that. Um, you want to hit him with the new question this week? Yeah. So um, it's a baseball team question this week with Oakland announcing that they're relocating eventually to Las Vegas, well, via Sacramento. Um, when was the last time a major league baseball team uh, relocated? So, hint: I went to a few of their games. So, as did I. Yeah, as did I. Within many of those games. Yeah, pretty awesome. So, uh, yeah. So make sure you can go ahead and drop it down below, or just watch the episode next week to be able to get that. But uh, anything else you wanted to do before we wrap up? Nah, man, I think that's it. I think that was a good one, man. All right. Well, listen, guys, that's it for that, uh, for this week, for that week, <laughs> for this week. This week, that week, all the weeks. Yeah, all the weeks, right? But we will catch you back next week. We're going to have some more football coverage, breaking down some of the NFL schedule, some more baseball stuff coming your way. But uh, Al, love you, brother. And uh, yeah, glad to do another one, man. Yeah. Hey, Willie, I love you. Stay safe as always. And peace. Peace.